Hi, uh, today I want to look at a problem involving static friction and a block on a slope. So let's consider this block over here. And what I want to do is I want to find which angle over here is the block going to begin the slide. We're going to assume that there's a coefficient of static friction equal to 0.2. The block has a mass m. In the angle theta, we're going to increase the angle theta until, oops, it begins to slide. So let's start with a free body diagram. That's always a great place to start. So the free body diagram for this block is pretty straightforward. There's a weight, it has a mass, so therefore there's a weight. The weight of the block is simply, let's call it W, and that's equal to M times little g. What else? There's also a normal force, right? There's two surfaces in contact here, the surface of the block and the surface of the ramp. So there has to be a normal force. That is always perpendicular to the surface. I'm gonna call this force capital N. And now if these are the only two forces acting on it, the block would slide because there's a component of the weight acting down the ramp. There's also another force, and that's the force of friction. And the force of friction for this case is a contact force here. I'm just gonna draw it up here. And that is the force that is opposing motion. This is the force of static friction. All right, so right now this block is in equilibrium. We wanna find when it's no longer going to be in equilibrium. Number one, this force of static friction here, if you remember, the force of static friction, it can vary. However, it goes up until a maximum value. And it's always less than or equal to some coefficient multiplied by the normal force. That's really important for this problem. So what happens when you increase the angle? This force of static friction gets bigger, gets bigger, gets bigger, right up until it hits the maximum value. That's when this is equal. So let's write this as the maximum force of static friction is equal to the coefficient of static friction times the normal. And we can't get any bigger than that for these two surfaces in contact. All right, the next step I want to do now is to start by writing down an equilibrium condition. And before I do that, I want to just choose a coordinate system. And here's the coordinate system I'm going to pick. This here's going to be the x direction down the slope and y direction is going to be pointing perpendicular to the surface. All right, our next step now is we want to break down the forces into x and y components. So if this is my x direction, I don't really have to worry about the normal force and the force of static friction. They're already along the x or the y direction. I do, however, have to break down the weight because the weight is not only along, you know, it kind of has both components here. So let's start by doing that. So here's going to be the weight in the x direction should look something like this. Let's call it WX. And the weight has also a component perpendicular to the ramp. Let's call that WY. I should be able to write down expressions for those. Now, if this is the angle theta, the angle inside this has to be alpha, let's call it that. And if this is a right angle triangle, if you continue the weight all the way down, um, you should get to the expression that theta plus alpha has to be equal to 90 degrees. And then, once you make that argument, then you should also find out that this here has to be the angle theta also. And that's kind of nice to have it in here because now it's very easy to write down the weight in the x direction. The weight in the x direction is simply the opposite. So that's mg sine of the angle theta. And this expression makes sense because if the angle theta is zero, there should not be a weight parallel to the ramp, and that's what you get with this expression. What about the weight in the y direction? Uh, the weight in the y direction then has to be mg cos theta. All right, I've got all my forces now down into x and y components. Let's write down the sum of the forces. If this object is in equilibrium, I have two expressions. Some of the forces along x have to be equal to zero, some of the forces along y also have to be equal to zero. Let's do the x direction first. In the x direction, there's two forces. I've got the weight acting down the ramp. That's in the positive direction. That's mg sine theta. And I've also got the force of friction acting opposite, minus the force of static friction acting up. This here has to be equal to zero. In the y direction, there's two forces. I've got the normal acting up, n, minus the weight acting down, mg cos theta, 
equals to zero. Okay, there we go. We got our two expressions now. We want to find at which angle theta, and let's call it theta max, um, is this object just going to begin to slip? Well, the tiniest little angle before it doesn't slip, um, the object's still in equilibrium. And that's basically when the force of static friction is going to reach its maximum value. So let's start with our x expression over here in the x direction. We're going to have mg sine of our equation theta max now is going to be equal to the force of static friction, the maximum force of static friction. And that one I know, the force of the maximum force of static friction is a coefficient multiplied by the normal. Now we don't quite yet have the normal in this expression, but we do have it for the y direction. So I could take this one step further and say that the coefficient of static friction multiplied by the normal, and the normal simply equals to mg cos theta. All right, now let's put everything in here. Sine of theta max. And this is also the same angle, and it's the maximum angle, so let's clean that up. Let's not forget to write the maximum here. All right, now what can we simplify? Look at both terms have mass. You can get rid of that. Both terms have little g. You can get rid of that. So if the block has more mass, or if this experiment is done on a different planet, we're going to get the same answer. At the end, what you find here, if you divide through by cos of theta max, is we're going to get that the tangent of theta max is simply equal to the coefficient of static friction. Here's my final equation. That's pretty cool. So for this problem here, all we have to do is substitute with the coefficient of static friction. That's 0 0.2. I know what that value is. All right, so you substitute the value in, and what do you get? You get that tan equals to 0 0.2. So that means that the angle theta, our maximum angle before this object will begin to slide, is approximately 11.3 degrees. Try that out. I substitute into the calculator. That's the answer I got. And that's because our maximum force of static friction can only get so big. If the angle gets any bigger than this, the weight will continue to get bigger, but, but you've hit the maximum for the force of static friction. If the weight is bigger than the maximum force of static friction, oops, it will begin to slide. All right, there you go, folks. Hope you enjoyed the problem. Leave a comment, subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions, just shoot me an email.